Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at Mono White Aggro Reimagined with Dominaria United. And Dominaria brings quite a few new tools to the table, starting out at 2 mana with Guardian of New Benalia, a 2 mana 2-2 two -two with Enlist, meaning as this creature attacks, you may tap a non-attacking creature you control without summoning sickness, and when you do, add its power to this creature's power until end of turn. So that's a great way to attack past some larger blockers once there's a bit of a board stall in the late game. Let's say your opponent has a shield root at 5 toughness. Now we can easily enlist one of our many 3 powered creatures to get the guardian up to 5 power so it can attack past it. And then in this case whenever we enlist a creature we also get to scry 2, helpful in finding more action. And we can also discard a card at any point to give the guardian indestructible until end of turn and we also have to tap it. So that will also discourage the opponent from trying to trade for our guardian as we can always discard a card to save it. And Guardian also pairs quite nicely with Sarah Paragon, which will allow us to replay lands and even spells out of our graveyard, so we don't feel too bad discarding to our Guardian. Then at 3 mana we're playing the full set of Anointed Peacekeeper. This is our new version of Elite Spellbinder, which rotated out of standard. This uh, 3 mana 3-3 three, three with Vigilance instead of Flying. And as it enters a battlefield, instead of exiling a card from the opponent's hand, we get to take a look at their hand and then choose any card name, which doesn't even have to be in the opponent's hand. And then spells your opponent's cast with a chosen name cost 2 generic more to cast. And activated abilities of sources with a chosen name also cost 2 more to activate, unless their mana ability so it can be helpful against planeswalkers that may be already on the battlefield for instance. So it's difficult to say whether Peacekeeper is better or worse than Spellbinder. A flyer is typically better of course, but in this case the Peacekeeper can be better if the opponent's holding multiple cards with the same name, because they will all become too more expensive. If the opponent's empty-handed, Peacekeeper can still be effective by naming a card the opponent's likely to draw, whereas the Spellbinder wouldn't be able to exile anything. But on the other hand, if the opponent can remove the Peacekeeper, we also lose that taxation effect immediately, whereas a Spellbinder still kept that card in exile. And then at 4 mana, as we already mentioned, we're playing a Sarah Paragon, a 3-4 flyer that once each turn lets us replay a land or a permanent spell with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard, and then if it would be put into our graveyard once again, it gets exiled instead and we gain 2 life. I'm sure someone in the comments will point out how this doesn't technically work within the rules. You can have a discussion about that in the comments, but for all intents and purposes, a great 4-drop in this deck, giving us a bit more late game when facing all those removal-heavy mid-range decks. And Sarah Paragon also works quite nicely alongside Intrepid Adversary specifically as a 3-1 with a lifelink at 2 mana that the opponent often wants to trade for pretty early in the game, otherwise it's going to be difficult for them to outrace. But then in the late game, once we have more mana available, we can replay it with our Sarah Paragon and still pay 1 and a white any number of times, and then it enters with that many Valor counters on it, giving our team a plus 1 plus 1 for each Valor counter on Adversary, so it can be an awesome Anthem effect to pump our team. And then we still have some of the usual suspects at 3 mana with Adlin, despite being legendary playing 4 copies, as it's so powerful for toughness, power equal to the number of creatures we control, has vigilance to dodge a wandering emperor, exiling it with a minus 2, and whenever we attack we can make a 1-1 token that's tapped and attacking, even as soon as we play Adlin on turn 3. And then the full set of Brutal Cathar as our removal spell of choice now that Skyclave Apparition is gone. Can exile a creature when it enters a battlefield and then can transform into Moonrage Brute with a day and night cycle here. And then at 2 mana full set of Thalia, great at punishing those non-creature spells. And as you can see we're not playing any non-creature spells ourselves, so it's going to be a one-sided effect. And then two copies of Sun Gold Sentinel as another three-powered two-drop can give us a bit of graveyard hate and even gains evasion if we can enable Coven and pay one and a white. And then at 1 mana, of course, full set of Hopeful Initiate, awesome if you can play it early and enable training to start putting plus 1 counters on it. And then we can also remove counters to destroy artifacts or enchantments, which can certainly come up. And then to round out our 1 drops, 2 copies of Hotshot Mechanic, just a 1 mana 2-1 in this deck, good ol' Savannah Lions. And then our mana base, 23 planes and 1 Iganjo, sadly no creature lands to play with nowadays. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Initiate into either Guardian or Sentinel. And then Peacekeeper to have a look and disrupt the opponent's game plan. It's 
So we'll see what our opponent's up to. Turn 1 Swamp. Yeah, I think I'm liking Guardian turn 2. But we might as well attack first. This will be harder for them to remove. So we don't lose too much momentum. And then we could discard Sentinel if they try and kill it. And uh, sure, we'll play a Peacekeeper now. Opponent's gonna kill the Initiates, that's okay. And they've got Shieldred. We don't have an answer to it. They have another Infernal Grasp as well. So the problem with naming Shieldred is that next turn they just Infernal Grasp my Peacekeeper. So at that point I maybe name Trespasser to throw off their curve. Or we just name Infernal Grasp anyway. Make that more expensive. Although we don't have a great plan to beat Shieldred. So yeah, this one's tough. I think at that point I'm better off naming Shieldred. Then maybe next turn they will Infernal Grasp and then they won't have an answer to Sarah Paragon. Can't enlist with our summoning sick creature, unfortunately. So Infernal Grasp now, as we suspected. But now we have a Sarah Paragon we can leverage. And then probably play it now. And then next turn get back our Peacekeeper again. And then wait on Adversary until we maybe have more mana. So there's Shieldreds. Okay. So Peacekeeper. And then we can enlist Paragon with the uh, Guardian when it attacks. And I'm guessing Invoke Despair is what we want to make more expensive. So a step one attack and then list. So we get more damage in and we get to scry. And a Brutal Cathar is what we need here. Thalia's not bad either. Could maybe still keep that on top. But Brutal Cathar first. And then a Sun Gold Sentinel looks good. Opponent is at 6 as well. Alright. Back up to 8. They wouldn't be able to cast Invoke Despair, so maybe Sorin here, make a Vampire, will be their play. And then once we remove Shieldred, we should be in the driver's seat. That's gonna be a Trespasser instead. To maybe nerf our Sarah Paragon a little bit, but that's fine. They maybe picked up another play. Underdog makes sense. All right, so it's not going to be game over just by removing Shieldred, but it should go a long way. So step one, Brutal Cathar. And then we'll have to figure out our attacks. Sentinel we're fine to trade because we can still replay it with Paragon. Could also discard something with a Guardian. But uh, yeah, this is definitely step one. Now we have to be careful with attacking with Peacekeeper because if that trades we won't be able to replay it and they would unlock their Invoke Despair. Not sure how much of a disaster that would be. But we might as well enlist the Peacekeeper instead. And then, yeah, I'll keep another Brutal Cathar on top. Just in case they answer the first one. And then we can discard and replay Adversary from the Graveyard. So no value is lost here. 
or we can just play Sentinel for now and then Adversary next turn. Exile Underdog. So yeah, we kind of trounced Mono Black here, unless they have a Meat Hook Massacre to recover, which they don't. Sorin may be hoping to find removal for Brutal Cathar, although that's probably too late at this point. Just makes a Vampire, which we can remove. Or Adversary pumping the team, I'm sure would have done it too. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Initiate into either Sentinel or Adversary, probably Sentinel, and then wait until we have more mana. Peacekeeper on three would be ideal. Opponent on Junt Colors. Yeah, we'll uh, play Sentinel here. And then really hoping for our land. There we go. So we'll attack, play Peacekeeper. No effects the opponent can have that punish tapped creatures, which would be a reason to play Peacekeeper first before attacking. And our opponent is on an Invoke Justice kind of reanimator deck with Titan of Industry. I Gunge is a way to discard Titan. Sanctuary Warden can also be discarded. Uh, yeah, I mean, we name Restoration here. Seems like a pretty easy answer. They have uh, three of them in hand. So yeah, this is one of those situations where Peacekeeper is better than the previous Elite Spellbinder that rotated out. And wow, our opponent just concedes here. Yeah, that's the power of Peacekeeper. And we even get to level up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play again with a very nice hand. Initiate into Thalia, and then turn 3 Adeline to keep up the pressure. Well, if we can always be on the play, this deck is pretty amazing. Opponent with a turn 1 forest, so it could be a creature deck, in which case Thalia is not quite going to be as effective. Green-white, maybe enchantments, in which case Thalia still does a lot of work, but Naturalist kind of undoes. Thalia's efforts here. So Adlin means your opponent just gains one for free, so we probably play Adlin's second main and then just attack for now. And then the initiate can also potentially blow up some enchantments later. Yeah, the rare circumstance where you play Adlin's second main. They might play a 3 mana enchantments, and it's going to be a defense the temple to make more mana. Fair enough. Peacekeeper can have a look. Okay, so now... Probably attack with everyone, but we can play Peacekeeper first to grow Adlin a little bit more, as well as the mechanic. But let's have a peek. Alright, touch the Spirit Realm. Is their only removal, double restoration, also tempting. I think Touch the Spirit Realm is what we name. And then play Mechanic. And smash. They can block the 1-1 one -one with Naturalists. And then we might see them chump Adlin. That's okay. Points at 10. And then next turn I could remove two counters to destroy the Naturalist itself, so they can no longer block with it. So they've got four mana here. And yeah, the discounts and the attacks cancel each other out. So it's just going to be teaching. They could potentially channel Touch the Spirit Realm still. Although... I guess they would probably be looking to exile Adeline before it gets a chance to attack. Um, my plan is still to remove counters from initiates. If they exile naturalists, it comes back in the end step. Is that a problem? Not really. Go for it now. That worked. And we'll move to combats. So are they going to flicker Adeline here? They could also chum block. 
And then they're still taking 10. So not quite lethal. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a keepable hand. No one drop, unfortunately, but uh, got some good catch-up mechanisms with Brutal Cathar up against the Red Aggro deck, so the life gain of Adversary is going to be valuable. Cathar will probably be removed by a burn spell, but if they are forced to remove Adversary, then they may not have a ton of answers left for Cathar. So Sentinel versus Adversary here. We could wait until we can play it with additional mana to pump our team. Although I'm kind of still liking Adversary now to make it tricky for the opponent to race and maybe force them to use removal. Opponent's red-green, so they might not actually have a ton of removal. Maybe a Kami's Flare. It's gonna be a Beast Caller. And then they might hang back. Okay. So do we want to play Brutal Cathar? Exile Beast Caller. We still have a backup to maybe deal with the partners. Which could be quite scary. And then... Adversary Attacks. I guess we could also exile the etching, but then our opponent's more likely to just take it, and then Beast Caller will keep growing, which could become a problem, so I think we still exile the Beast Caller. Uh, I guess I can attack first, since that doesn't make a huge difference. Right, opponent takes a trade. And exile Beast Caller. And then next turn we can double spell a Raichu's a scary one. Not quite as scary as a partner's that's unchecked. But pretty close. Okay, so now... Could go for another Brutal Cathar plus Mechanic. Or we could play Sentinel plus Adversary, although then it wouldn't be kicked. Or I can just play Adversary for 4 mana. Which... Definitely helps us race, especially with Brutal Cathar potentially removing a blocker next turn. So I don't hate that idea either. Sure. And we're still pretty far away from Adversary for 6 mana. So we don't necessarily have to wait that long. Stormseeker's okay. Hoping to dodge a Kami's Flare. Just a Firebrand. Okay. So they can give Firebrand haste potentially and prevent us from blocking. Although they won't be able to target adversaries, so. I think we just take nine and then hit back with adversary after maybe exiling the Stormseeker. We'll gain four life. That's a tricky race for the opponent to win. Although not impossible. Admittedly. Attack for 7, gain 4, and add a sentinel to the board. Last card is Iconoclasts with Kicker. Okay, that's a lot of haste damage. 12 total. They can prevent one creature from blocking. But we will be forced to trade. And I guess there's even the Raichu damage I hadn't taken into account yet. But uh, if we block here, take 9 down to 2. And then we have lethal on the way back. So that should work. They might have wanted to switch around those uh, cannot block to get their Stormseeker back as an extra blocker. And then they might have been able to survive an extra turn. But uh, yeah, the fact that they didn't have removal for Cathar here is what made the difference onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play, missing a one drop, but Guardian into Peacekeeper with Paragon for the late game still seems acceptable. And then we can discard excess lands to Guardian to keep it alive. And get some stuff back from the graveyard as well. 
and then by enlisting we can maybe scry into more goodies let's see what we're up against turn one swamp does not look like they have a cut down in hand could see infernal grasp but we're happy enough discarding a land and then peacekeeper gets to have a look it's going to be a bank buster for now. So we'll hit for two. And peace keep. Okay, so we have a shieldred. We have an infernal grasp, trespasser, and invoke despair. So very similar hands to last time when we ended up naming shieldred anyways. This time we do have double Sarah Paragon, so if they kill one with Infernal Grasp, it's not the end of the world. But I think we still do the same here and name Shieldred. We also don't have the one drop, which we had last time. So there's a bit of a difference here in how the game's playing out. So Infernal Grasp going after Peacekeeper, and then Paragon gets it back. But they will have played Shieldred in the meantime. Did they also draw a cutdown, maybe? Looks like it. If they're pausing in our draw step. Well, we can play another Peacekeeper now if we want, instead of Paragon which I don't dislike, can name Shieldred again. And then we'll wait a turn on uh, Paragon to maybe name Invoke Despair with the next Peacekeeper. And they just drew another Infernal Grasp instead. All right, I think we still go for Shieldreds. And then if they go for maybe a Trespasser with a plan of crewing Bankbuster, then we can still attack past it thanks to Enlist. They're just going to Infernal Grasp now, and then they can draw with Bankbuster as well. Okay, that's a good draw. So now we can double spell. Kind of hoping they try and kill Guardian so I can discard our Hotshot mechanic and replay it with Paragon. So we get immediate value. Alright, damage happens. Play Paragon. Opponent draws with a Bankbuster. And then play Mechanic. And then next turn we can Peacekeep to name Invoke Despair while Shieldred's going to start draining us. But at least Guardian can attack and enlist to scry towards an answer. Interesting. Opponent drawing with Bankbuster, so they've got other plans here besides Shieldred. Infernal Grasp makes sense. Oh, we've got another one, luckily. And I'll probably keep a land in hand for Guardian now. So let's attack. One's at four. And pass it back. So now Invoke Despair would not save them. So we could see Shieldred. And then, yeah, we'll see if that's good enough. Opponent saying GG. So, yeah, possible their best play still doesn't save them. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a very nice hand. Initiate into Thalia. Into Adlin. Might just be our best draw in some matchups if Thalia's effective. Turn one Delver. Well, Thalia's gonna be effective against the counterspell deck, that's for sure. So hoping they're just mono blue as opposed to blue reds, which might have more removal. 
opponent passes. And uh, yeah, if we play Adlin, there's no way they can counter it. So that seems good. Attack. Train. Make a 1-1. One, one. And this game's going to be over very quickly. Their best chance might be to play a Hardy Jin, which can hold off some of our attacks, but we even have a Brutal Gathara at the ready. I guess Tolarian Terror would be the better blocker, but then they need to fill the graveyard very quickly. Alright, there's Hardy Jin. And I'm not even sure if Cathar is better than Adversary pumping the team. I think that's better here. Train initiate again. They could try to double block Thalia, I suppose, but then they're also just taking a ton of damage, which they can't afford. Their opponent's at six. Their non-creature spells still costing one more, but I guess the Haughty Djinn offsets it a little bit. Now they actually get a discount. But uh, yeah, let's see if they can counter Brutal Cathar. Can maybe bait out something with Mechanic, although if it's a conditional counter spell like Syncopate, then uh, we're better off maybe having the one mana left over. But I'm pretty sure if we just attack with the team, our opponent still dies. Awesome. So yeah, some very quick and brutal games with Mono White Aggro, special if you can be on the play and start with that turn one initiate. The deck looks amazing. Of course, sometimes you'll be on the receiving end and you don't get to curve out perfectly, and then your creatures that shine when they get to attack will look a lot worse on defense. So it's by no means a perfect strategy. Sometimes you will face those removal heavy draws from the opponent, maybe backed up by a sweeper effect, and then you're going to be in trouble. But that's also where Sarah Paragon can help you out in the late game, getting back threats out of the graveyard. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.